Cool. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Hamey Yoon, and I work with a team at Samsung Electronics who works on Samsung Smart Things. I am a designer, which means that I won't be writing a single line of coding today. Uh, instead, I will show you a lot of images. And because of this reason, initially I thought that maybe this would be you know, one of the more relaxing, relaxing sessions in this conference. But then again, I started thinking and realized that this is a conference for developers, after all. And you might find coding, you know, lines of coding, more relaxing. But still, um, I digress. Uh, the title of this session is Designing the Taxonomy of Capabilities and Smart Things. I do want to introduce the structure and terminologies of um, Samsung Smart Things be before I begin. So, upon entering or launching the app, the first screen you see is the dashboard or the main page. And on the dashboard or the main page, you have device cards. So if you add devices to your hub, um, those are the cards that show on your screen. And each one of those cards represent a different device. And if you select those cards, um, you'll see the device plugin pages. And that's where you see all the controllers or the information that is collected or anything else. Um, in this session, I will be talking about the structure and philosophy behind device plugins. But before I do that, I do want to kind of play a little bit of role game, I guess, in a, in a way. And um, say, imagine that everyone in this room works at a company named Brightlight. And at Brightlight, we make smart bulbs. The problem is that since there are many pre-existing smart bulbs in the world already, in order to become smarter and more special than the others, our team at Bright Light, through research and development, came up with ideas, interesting ideas, to make Bright Light more interesting and more powerful. We've added new features such as a timer, a motion detection sensor, and a power meter. This made our bulb very unique, and our customers loved it. And that's how Bright Light became the smart bulb it has always dreamed of becoming. But the story doesn't end there. It never does. Now our team at Bright Light needs to create an app to control the smart bulb and start marketing from scratch. Those are things that the company needs to do on its own and is something that can be fully controlled by itself. In order to become a more major player in the world of IoT, we will need to bridge more partnerships with major IoT ecosystems and platforms and provide the needed technical support in order to be added. Becoming a part of an ecosystem that is completely designed and developed by another entity can be a bit tricky. A platform could support custom layouts and features per device, but maintenance for that would be quite a, quite a nightmare. It is more feasible for a platform to provide a generic set of common features per device type, but even that has its own issues. Let me tell you why. Every single smart thing can be different, and it should be. Um, even within the same device type, light bulbs, for example, the list of features can be very different. Let's say you can only control the power, brightness, and color for most of the smart bulbs out there. As a platform provider, it would make the most sense to create a generic layout with just those three features, kind of like what you see here. You can see that it is showing just the three features that I've mentioned before, along with basic information such as the device's name and the location information of the device itself, and maybe a menu for additional settings and a link to the OEM's app. If we connect a light bulb that doesn't allow color control, the color controller will not be shown. And if we add a light bulb that only allows power control, then this is somewhere along the lines of what you would see. 
In reverse, if a ball features something more than just the standards, the platform provider will have to figure out a way to show those special features. There is a high chance that these are the devices on the right side, um, that those are the more expensive devices that are out on the market. And if a customer went all the way out there to buy a device like that, then most likely, you know, it would be for those special features. This is why even since the classic version of SmartThings, the system has been known to be very modular. You can see that the bottom of the screen shows individual features that are combined like Lego blocks. SmartThings is used by over 45 million users worldwide today and is a host to over 400 different device types. And when I say device types, they're not just based on the models or the maker or the brand, it's literally device types. And the number of devices that can be added to SmartThings is only growing. We have an amazing group of great minds worldwide who have been working on this project, which is why we had to set a few common goals or unified philosophy, if you will, to keep in mind as a team. First, we needed the platform to be very expandable. We want, we want it to be easy for OEMs to um, add their devices to our system. Secondly, we need our platform to be versatile. We've always been looking for ways to include those various special features of different smart devices. Lastly, as a platform provider, we do ask ourselves every day if our platform is manageable. And this is because we want to, in the future, um, add efficiently add and evolve our system and um, make it better. In SmartThings, different features of smart devices are pretty much called capabilities. And this is the building block for SmartThings. Currently, there are over 150 different types of capabilities that are defined. And the specifications for the list of capabilities um, can be found on our developer site. And you, if you use the QR code on the right, right top corner, um, you can go straight into the website. As we add more smart devices, we've always, and we've also been adding more capabilities to this list. Next spring, we'll be introducing a new look for the individual capabilities. We've initially looked at each and, one, each and every one of the capabilities and grouped them depending on um, their characteristics. First, we have the types where it displays simple text. Maybe some of the capabilities may show or have different values. So there, for the three-axis sensor, we have the X, Y, Z value. But still, they're all put together in one capability card. Then similarly, we have some text cards that are accompanied by visual cues so that the, for the user, it is easier for them to realize that, hey, like there is something, something has changed in the device where it actually requires attention. And lastly, there are designs that include buttons, buttons with icons or text depending on what works better. Here you'll see cards where data is visualized even more. Indicator type cards display collected data over a visualized legend or an indicator so that we know intuitively that pH 5.5 is not quite neutral and slider types allow the user for user control. These visual elements are distinctive, and we think that it would be very easy for users to differentiate between the different types. For more complex devices, we've started defining compound cards, meaning a card can hold multiple capabilities in one card. Different speakers may allow for different functionalities, but we will provide variations that will cater to all. The music player, 
capability or the capability card is a great example for that. Sooner or a bit later, you will be able to add custom capabilities to the platform yourself through the developer workspace. We imagine that the standard um, taxonomy of card designs that we've created this time around will be useful when that time comes. The current method to create plugins is to simply list capabilities by importance. You list and we create. It's as simple as that. By creating plugin pages as a sum of capabilities and not per device type, we are able to create a manageable system that is customizable and consi consistent in design. At this point, I'd like to talk about what we've learned a plugin page is to a user and have identified when and why they visit a page like this and what features we could possibly offer even more. If you think about it, in order to access the device plugin page, a user has to first turn on the phone, launch the app, and then locate the device card, and then go into the device card as well. If a user takes all that time and effort to go all the way in there, most likely they're looking for something specific or something very detailed, like the different status. So um, maybe that might be the connection protocol, like is it Zigbee or the, you know, the version of the plugin itself. And similarly, maybe they're looking for controls that are beyond just the power on and off controllers because that's something that you can actually do off the device card as well. We also think that this would be a great place for users to set up simple automations and to check the timeline of changes in the status of the device. For the new design, we've converted the activity history card into its own page within the plugin. All this raw data can be used as a simple tracking purpose type of um, information, but at the same time, we feel strongly that it would be an amazing source of meaningful information when users are trying to create new automations. For example, let's say a user is um, is opening a door and whenever that user does that, within five seconds, a light bulb will turn on. In cases like that, automation, simple automation would really be helpful. And that's something that as a platform provider, smart things can definitely give to the user as recommendations. Just like in the greatest infomercial in history states it, smart devices are meant to allow its users to set it and forget it. I don't know if anyone remembers that phrase, but I love that infomercial, but anyways. Um, and yet, for a lot of newcomers, we'd like to provide some tips and tricks, maybe ideas from even other users as well. We think that this would be a great place to revive the older recommended automations feature that we used to have in the past. For button devices, um, we've added a card to offer ways to easily set up button actions when it is pressed once or twice or held down for a longer time. The ultimate goal of IoT is to automate for convenience. This is why we've, we've had multiple lessons or sessions, um, boots and code labs that are related to web core and rules API during this convention as well. In smart things, I think it is interesting for me to also mention device groups because um, devices are grouped based on their capabilities, not by their device types, which allows even bulbs to be um, grouped with different on and off switches. And for the case of speakers, they can also be um, grouped with televisions that have ambient modes like the Samsung Frame TV. We've also started creating service plugins that have their own plugin pages as well as a place on the dashboard itself. Energy and air quality service plugins will aggregate data from the existing devices per location 
and provide an overview of the energy used or the air quality of that location. This, I think, is a very attractive feature, not only for the users, but also for the OEMs. It's because there is that factor of added exposure as well as a chance to naturally contribute as a part of an ecosystem. If your company doesn't create devices, that's fine too. Instead, if you provide services, there are also ways that we can collaborate. We've started partnering up with Vodafone and some apartment complexes in Korea in order to create security service plugins as well as home IoT service plugins. We think that the world of IoT is still very, very young, and there are many scenarios left to explore. If you have fresh, great ideas, we are always um, welcoming that. I am very short on time. Um, which is why I can't really go into the details right now, but there are booths ready um, out on the Dev Square related to this, to this topic as well, if you want to check out a bit more. Um, as I said earlier, there are a lot of booths and code labs related to automations and service plugins in general. You can also check our sessions online for missed ones. Um, just yesterday, we had ones um, on Rules API and WebCore. I know that all of the sessions during this conference will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, and I assure you, you, you will be reminded through your email or whatever you have um, to check those out. There still are two more sessions related to smart things. Um, one is enriching your smart home experience with voice assistance, how, and the other is how do you future-proof IoT you add a hub. Um, those two sessions will be in the same room, and I definitely welcome you to stick around and um, attend those as well. Um, I definitely like to thank you for spending the last 20 minutes of this conference with me. Um, it's been a very exciting and aspiring project to work with a, an amazing group of designers um, and developers and everyone else too. Everyone's been very supportive and we've been able to collaborate with many, many different teams around the world. And um, I think I see some faces here. Uh, I really enjoyed it and I really am appreciative of the chance to talk about what we've spent so much time and effort into in the past year. Hopefully you found it enjoyable as well. Thank you. <laughs>